In this tutorial, we're going to discuss how we can lock files. Now, what do I mean by lock files? Well, the thing is, you may have already heard about threads and thread locks. Okay, there's this threading module and we need to import a thread and lock from there. You may have seen that code before. We even have some over here. Okay, you may be familiar with such code. Basically, you know how regular locks are used with stuff like variables? They're used within a program. They're used within the different threads that belong to the same program. But file locks come into play when you have multiple programs, different programs, different Python scripts that are all modifying the same file. Okay, so you may already know about regular locks that they're used when multiple threads are modifying the same resource. So file locks are really just the same thing, but for files, okay? So there may be problems if two different programs are simultaneously trying to, uh, you know, they're trying to modify a file and then one of them is writing to it, one of them is reading from it. So there might be some problems. If both of them are writing to it, they may override each other's changes, stuff like that. So we use a file lock to ensure that only one program can access and modify that file at any given point. So that's a file lock, okay? Now here we have two different programs, okay? I wrote two different programs and I'm going to use these two programs to show you how we can implement file locks. But before that, let me just walk you through this code. Okay, I wrote the code out beforehand just so we could, you know, get into our explanation a lot faster. So here's our file, example.txt. And this is just from previous executions. Ignore that. Okay, so here's our file that our, both our programs want to modify. Okay, and here is what we call a lock file. Now, normally when you create a lock, such as in this tutorial over here, wait, hold on, this is the one without locks, uh, this one. So normally when you create a lock, it's between the same program. So you can create this lock variable and any thread within this program can access it. But the question is, when you're dealing with different Python programs, how do you make a lock available to all of those different programs? because that lock needs to be shared, right? All programs need to access the same lock. It's not possible for us to create a lock for each program, right? Otherwise, it's not the same lock, okay? It's like there needs to be one key, okay? Only one key, and it needs to be in a place where all the programs can access it. So where should it be? Well, it's logical. If we're using files, okay, why not just make a file that acts as a lock? Okay, because within the same program, we can use the variable, sure, but we can't do that between different programs, right? So when we're using file locks, we just create a lock file, okay? And I'm, I'm going to run this code very briefly, okay? And you'll notice that this lock file pops up here, okay? And as soon as it finishes its execution, the lock file dis disappears because it's no longer needed. It gets deleted, okay? So that's, that's the lock file basically, okay? So it's like a common file that exists and acts as a lock, okay, for our example.txt file, okay? So that's the lock file, okay? And you can use the lock file to create a variable lock, okay, that we can use within our program, all right? And then we can use it like a normal lock, like a normal lock that we use in threads, okay? So we use the acquire command, we use the release command, just like we do normally, okay? It's pretty standard stuff. Okay, I'm sure you've all seen this before. Okay, so yeah, and if we acquire the lock, then we'll print out lock acquired, then we'll open up our file, example.txt, and we'll write some data to it. And then we'll release that lock, okay? Because we're done with it, okay? so. I'm gonna show you the guys now how this works. Okay, I'm gonna run both pieces, pieces of code at the same time. It's a bit tricky to actually run both of them at the same time, so keep your eyes peeled, okay? I'm just gonna, gonna include one more print statement, which says acquiring lock, okay? And I'll put this into both. 
Now I'm going to run them both through the terminal. I have, I have two different terminals set up here. Okay, this one is going to, what the heck, hold on. It's just executing, hold on, just let it finish. I'm going to go back here and delete that. Okay, now this one is going to run file log one and this one, oh boy, again. All right, so this one is going to run file log two. And why is the output getting so messed up? All right. So this one, as I said, is going to run file lock two. You can see the two over here. And this one is going to run file lock one. You can see the one in the name over there. OK, so I'm going to run them real quick. So keep your eyes peeled. OK, go. This one is acquiring the lock, lock acquired. And this one is attempting to acquire the lock, but it cannot acquire the lock for a few seconds because this, fi this file lock one file this was acquiring it for five seconds. I put a sleep command in there. Now, if I drag this out a bit longer, you'll see what happens. I'm going to run this, go over to my next terminal quickly, and now it's acquiring the lock because it lock, file lock one has acquired it and it's waiting 10 seconds. So until those 10 seconds pass, file lock two, our file lock two dot py file would not, will not be able to access it. Okay. And only after 10 seconds did it acquire the lock and then it proceeded and wrote that data. And now we ended up with like, four of those in here because I ran the programs twice. So yeah. So yeah, that's the concept of file locks. Okay. Just one more thing I want to mention is that you can actually pass this timeout parameter in here, which states that at most wait five seconds. Okay. Uh, otherwise, you know, ignore it and proceed. Okay. And the timeout parameter is just uh, useful in case you have a two programs and one of them is taking a very long amount of time. Okay. Uh, in that case, you can just, you know, say that don't wait longer than this amount of time, like three seconds or four seconds or five seconds or even one second. So don't wait longer than that. Just proceed. Okay. And this actually returns, hold on. All right. This actually returns true or false depending on whether the lock was acquired or not. So you can do something like this, that if lock dot acquired, then do the shared operation, shared resource operation. Okay. Otherwise do something, do something else. Okay. And maybe wrap this inside a while loop so that it keeps checking every now and then, like it does something else. Okay. It does something else. Then it checks back in after doing that something else. Like, Hey, is that lock free now? And if it's not, it'll do something else again and it'll loop back around here and it'll check, Hey, is it still free? And if it is, then it'll do it. Then we can just do a break over here and it's, it's going to break out of this while loop. Okay. So that's just a helpful tip that you may want to know. Okay. So yeah, with that, we're done with this video and, uh, if there's anything else you guys are interested in, uh, if you want to learn more about threads, subscribe to the channel because we have a lot more content coming out on both threads, locks, and all kinds of other interesting Python libraries and Python content. Okay. So if you thought this video was interesting, if you learned something new from it and you liked it, do leave a comment, leave a like, let me know what you thought, and hopefully I'll get to see you guys in a different video. All right. Later.